going to start. I'm very happy to be here, as everyone said, after two years of a Zoom talk when everybody needs to mute themselves and I don't have any feedback from the audience. So I'm, I'm very happy to be here and I'm just going to introduce myself. And my name is Noma. I was born in 1973 in Israel. And you probably know the complexities in Israel and the conflict between the Arab and the Jews. And because of that kind of constant conflict, I had to go to the army and I served from age of 18 to 21. I served three years in the Navy. And I was a sea navigator. And straight after that, I went to study graphic design and typography. And I studied in Jerusalem. And straight after that, I moved to London. And that was 2000 before laptops and, and digital portfolios and websites. So I came with portfolio, physical portfolio with my work. Most of it was in kind of Hebrew typography. And I started to send it to different agencies and I didn't get reaction. And I realized that no one needed uh, Hebrew typographers in London. And I was living in a small bread and bre bed and breakfast. It's like a small hotel uh, in central London. And I recreated something that I did when I was 17 years old. And Israel was in, in kind of war with Iraq, and we had missiles that came from Iraq, and we were sitting in a sealed room with gas masks. And I remember myself looking at Saddam Hussein's uh, article about the fact that he's using radioactive uh, materials on his own people. Same thing that happened these days in Syria. And I did this kind of around this radioactive symbol that, that illustrates the, the article. And suddenly, you know, the eyes, the, 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 the radioactive symbol become eyes and mustache. And I recreated it when I was in London and started to send, send it to The Guardian and different various uh, newspapers, Time Out. And straight away, I got response from Time Out. And my first illustration was published in 2012. And it was Shakespeare, To Be or Not To Be. And uh, that's why the question mark. But it was also a, a story that revealed facts and, and things that people didn't know about Shakespeare. And that was my personal to be or not to be. So it's kind of one of my favorite illustrations. And things evolved straight away. I got meeting with the creative director of GQ. And he told me that they're doing an art, uh, a story on Michael Jackson. And they want to approach the story from the mothers, from the mothers that started to know that Michael Jackson is a, is a pedophile, but the fact that the mothers was leaving the baby with Michael Jackson. And I remember that I went to the toilet, washed my hand, and I saw this pictogram. I took photo, and a few days after, that became the, the solution of, of Michael Jackson. So a lot of time, I have sign language, and the signs are all over. I all the time look at walls, and I look around me and everything kind of serves me and at some point it comes as, as idea and executed. Or another, an, another example of something that you probably don't want to, it's like 10 minutes before uh, sending the illustration to the Guardian newspaper, my computer crashed and I lost everything and I did this drawing kind of around the apple, suddenly it looks like someone is screaming. But few years after, you know, the same principle start become a Steve Jobs portrait for Wired magazine with the apple and the leaf that go up. And in 2007, I had a kind of good collection of, of work and I published my first book, which called Guess Who? Charlie Chaplin is my hero for telling stories without words and this is what I do. I'm, I'm, I'm a storyteller but almost using a, a visual pantomime language. I don't use speech bubbles, and I don't use typography. And I went to the opposite of what I studied, in a way, which is words. Because I came to London, and I lost my language, and I couldn't express. And also, Latin letters it didn't hit me in the stomach the same as the Hebrew letters. And, and I really went to this kind of pantomime language of expressing myself with words, and symbols, and iconography. And Bob Dylan for a timeout. That was a story of, of Dylan using electric guitar for the first time on a show because he was known for acoustic. Pulp Fiction. 
Stallone, Rocky. And my process of creating portrait, I look a lot in the mirror and I mimic the person that I'm illustrating. I'm trying to capture an iconic moment. For example, this one is, you can see that he's screaming, Adrian, or so, you know, when, when Stallone's lips are kind of stretched up. And I'm looking for this kind of thing because we all have two eyes, nose, mouth, and, and that's it, but we're so different from each other. And this is something that I'm looking all the time, this point, little point of difference, the gap between the nose and the eye, uh, the mouth, or the, the space between the, the eyes. This is Spock that you talk about. And I'm, I'm inspired to create to, to things like Spoke, to reduce more and more. And it doesn't work straight away when I start. It, it can start with hand drawing and it's going to be realistic drawing. And then I start to strip down and I'm just looking for one element that will tell the story. And for me, again, this is kind of a good example of what I'm looking for. And it's up to the brief. For example, this is a, a, this is a, a, a brief that was including E.T. And, and George, and you can see a dinosaur in, in, in his, his uh, beard as well. So it's kind of talking about, about all these films. So sometimes it's not just one element, if the brief requires a lot of elements, so I'm using kind of more busy portrait. Tarantino. That was about Kill Bill and the violence in Tarantino film. Films. <clears throat> As you can see, I don't copy photos. I look at the person, I have a memory that I don't know what's happened there, but when I start the work, I remember the essence of the face. And Tarantino has this kind of Popeye face, it's a bit folded, and I exaggerated, but his face also broke the, the sword. And you can see a hand with blood on the top. That's another thing that I'm looking at. I'm, I'm, I'm staying away from. I call it in brackets fat in a way. So just what I need and every element and every element element need to be part of the story. So I'm staying away from the creative illustration or things that are not necessary to the illustration. That's another pulp fiction and it's a good example to show, you know, some it's it's kind of the same film but completely different approach. You can see Samuel L. Jackson and Tarantino. Kurt Cobain, that was about his music. Amy Winehouse with heroin. I used to live in Camden Town and I used to see her buying drugs opposite my, my window and this is how, so it's not a commissioned work, this is something that I was actually looking and this is how it came. But on the time when I live in Camden, I don't know if you know London, so there's a lot in, in the area of Camden, there's a lot of goth. Uh, Goth guys with black eyes and black lipstick and white faces. And this time, when I lived there, I started to lose the face. And I was looking for something very gothic of just floating eyes and mouth. And where you live and your environment really, really inspire on, on what, what you do. David Bowie, and that was on music and Berwick Street. It's in, in London. so. It's about record scene in the 60s, that's why I've used record in the needle of the record. Audrey Hoffborn about style. That was my first cover for New York Times and it was about kind of accusing the paparazzi on Diana's death. So you can see a camera and all her face is actually happening from the camera and you can see the crushed car. I'm sorry that I'm revealing you all that because normally it takes a bit of time to, to digest and discover and I'm kind of killing it when I'm telling you everything. But just stop me if I'm, if I'm revealing too much. <laughs> George Floyd. So yeah, you don't need, I don't need to explain this one. I don't need to explain this one. I think I'm going to have a whole book on uh, Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> and such a great character. I'm, I'm really missing his personality. And I, I think I have 10 portraits of Donald Trump for, for it's New York Times, Guardian, and all of them are different. You know, this is Donald Trump in Asia. <laughs> 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 S 
So again, the brief really, that was about John, Donald Trump using Twitter, obviously, but the brief takes the illustration to different, different place. You know this guy? And you can see two dead people on his lips and two bombs and two MiG aeroplanes. And another Putin in different time and different story that was about Putin behavior and Putin's strategy, and at this time he was just a snake and not a killer. And this one is for Coca-Cola in Trafalgar Square. When I work in co with Coca-Cola, one of my rules is just to use their bottles. I love their bottles and they're just timeless shape and I use it all the time. So you can see they're all made from Coca-Cola bottles. Oh. And and this one was for BAFTA, which is, I don't know if you know, it's like the British Oscar. And so this is something that I started a few years ago, and now they're using illustrators every year for their posters and for their brochures. And it's really fun to work with BAFTA. And it's, it's something that I'm very happy that I did because it opened, it, it, it opened it to a lot of other illustrators. And at the same time that I was doing portraits, I worked with magazines and newspapers on completely different subjects. And in 2009, I published Negative Space. That was my second book. And I don't know if you all know what is Negative Space, but it's a space around us. This is Negative Space as well. So it's, it's something that I'm... I'm exploring for, I think, 20 years, and it's rooted in my work, negative space, and I'm using it. Here you can see a dog that eat a cat and a cat that eat a mouse, and that was the cover of the, of the book. And it, it, uh, it's a selection of kind of really difficult subjects from death and depression and crime, but there's something in illustration that gives them a bit of hope and smile, and, and that's what illustration is doing compared to photography, we just show reality. There's, uh, there's magic or imagination in illustration when that can take the subject to a completely different area. And that was the back and the front of the cover of the book. A few spreads from the book, this is about American soldiers, what they're doing when they're not fighting in Bosnia. So it's made from an uh, army pattern. And a lot of stories on 9-11. And at the same time, I started to go out and, and explore, and I moved to galleries. And this is something that I'm still doing, and I love to work in spaces and present in galleries. So it's a com completely different format from newspaper and gives me different... Uh, different opportunities and different executions. That was my first ex uh, exhibition in London, in Hoxton Square, which is a mix of cutouts and screen prints, and I started to work with wood and metal. And that's a confused hedgehog that hump chainsaw, but it sits on the floor, so it's kind of a very long bar, and the chainsaw is at the end. And that's from my studio. And there's a lot of challenges in 3D, so when I do 3D, I do a real 3D, so that's, I don't know, like a two-meter balloon that balance on a needle, which is a nightmare to, to create something like that, but I managed to do it. So it sits on pedestal, and the needle is that long, and the balloon is sit above it. And the one of the left, you can see a match there, which this work called burned out, and this is pop out. And that's from my talk in Paris and in Italy. So I'm kind of all over with, with exhibition and I'm presenting in different spaces. That was in the Baltic Center in UK. This one happened in, in the wood. If you can see a dog in here, but you can see another dog sniffing his back. And I was sitting in Highgate Wood in London and suddenly a black, I saw a black Labrador and a white male Labrador was kind of <laughs> sniffing in the back, and the female Labrador lifted her tail, and suddenly the owner was pulling the dog, and the tail was kind of stayed up, 
And I really love this moment of the dog was there a minute ago and suddenly disappeared and just the tail was hanged. And again, this is kind of minutes, moments that I'm looking for, this existence and not existence, life, death, is there, is not there. And I sketch it. So when I see things like that, I normally sketch them straight away in my sketchbook. Or another example, when I came back from a talk in Brighton, and I was sitting next to a drunken guy on the train. I don't know if you've been in UK, but you can sit like properly drunk with vomit and McDonald's all over and ketchup. And but suddenly the train stopped and there was light outside. And it was so beautiful because all the features and all the disgusting bits on his face disappeared and it looks like a moon that protects him. So if you look from the left, you can see a moon and you can see him on the right. But kind of horrible situation that become beautiful and I sketched it. And a few years ago, I realized that I don't need to print. My works are so simple that I don't need to use ink. And I was looking for a solution, and this is Flora, that was my solution. Flora is my dog. It's 750 kilos dog, with hydraulic engine in the belly, and hydraulic neck, and handles as a, as a teeth. And Flora is cutting my work in a very strong power of from 4 to 20 ton of cut. Very physical and very... It's, it's not doing what laser is doing. It doesn't leave any any bleed of uh, fire. It took me six months to develop it from jumping physically on blade and putting weight to see how I can cut thick paper. And it's not easy when it comes to large paper. So in a way, it's, it's doing what cookies the cutter is doing. You know, I'm just kind of cutting my work. And this is one of the die cuts. So you put a die cut, so I'll show you. And that's a wall from one of my exhibitions, so I don't need to be there, I leave signed empty paper. You come to the gallery, you buy empty paper, you can choose die cut, you feed the die cut and the paper in the dog, and you press on the teeth, and you get print. So you can choose, and you can bring your own materials, so you can do a mix and match. So these are all kind of materials that people are bringing from Oasis record sleeve to David Bowie, and they're cutting it and kind of creating, and obviously the gallery is helping them to amend them and frame them. So I'm going to show a few more examples of Cut It Out. Don't try to have 750 kilo dog, it's not easy <laughs> to, to move, but yeah, we've, we've been in many places actually, Flora and me. And this is Cut Out the Light, which starts from dark room and I use luminescent paper to, to cut and suddenly the light is coming. That was in the design museum in London. So a lot of time I'm doing like live events when I do live drawings and I'm cutting. <coughs> so it's almost a new, new form of creation. And the beauty of it is that it's one off, so nothing is look the same. Each cutout is completely different from the other. And that was collaboration with Marcel Wonders. I don't know if you know him, but, uh, okay. but that's a great example. If you look on the left, there is a Missoni bag, and someone came to the gallery, and she wanted to buy a print, and I was there. It was in Amsterdam, and I really loved her bag, and I said, let's cut your bag. She said, okay. So she ended up kind of buying a piece of her own bag in a print and went home with bag with holes. <laughs> That was in Amsterdam as well. And when I came back from Amsterdam, I told you that I work in the wood and there is a cafe inside. And I think it was the first time that I had a proper conversation from, with a guy from Iran. You obviously know the conflict and the stress between, uh, between Iran and Israel. And I never had kind of nice conversation. And I, th I thought, it's so nice when you talk to someone on a personal level and not on national level. And I went to the studio after that and I did a this drawing and this transition, so from gun to a dove, peace dove. And that was starting another round of Cut It Out, which called Cut the Conflict. I created new die cuts, and all the die cuts were kind of images from war, but with something hidden inside, that, that this one have heart, so something positive inside. 
And I ask people from different nationalities that are in conflict, in, from, in countries in conflict, to send me materials. And when I say materials, it means this is some of the things that people send me from flags, chocolate boxes, and, and paper wraps, money, everything. And the idea was to create, so I was sitting with a guy from Oxford. He's a professor that specializes in conflict around the world, and he mapped all the conflicts around the world. And I was actually asking from people in these regions to send me materials. And this is how I started to cut them. So it's, it's almost started from, it's like a divorced child, a child of divorced parents that wants his parents to be together. So I was, each cutout and each print uh, was contained two countries that are in fight, in constant conflict. So this is Lebanon and Israel. On the, le on the bottom side, both of them are page eight from newspaper that was sent to me, one from Lebanon and one from Israel. And I started to realize that all the enemies are so similar, and the materials that was, were sent to me from countries in conflict are kind of in, in very similar. And another rule in this project was to give credit to the people who send it, who send the materials. And this one is from Iran and from US, India and Pakistan. So each cutout is, is completely different. That's another one from Israel and Lebanon. The left one is currency from North Korea. Someone sent me currency from North Korea. He couldn't, they stopped him. He was investigated why he sent money. He just wanted to, I don't know why he wanted to send me money. And at the end he sent it to a friend in Italy, but what you see on the left, it's a North Korean currency and South Korean pasta. That's the red bit on the, on the edge. And yeah, the cut, cut the Conflict launch was with people from 40 different nationalities, so it was very exciting. For example, the one on the right, it's, um, it's a carpet from a mosque in Pakistan. So each, each material have a different story. I'll show you a bit more of that. That's a that's funny one. It's is from Israel on the right and from Palestine on the left. It's the same place, the same map, but with completely different names. So each country <laughs> called the same place in different names. And Iran and Israel, and US. Iran and US, that's for my, the mother of my hairdresser. She sent me a chocolate box from Iran. So yeah, that's cut the conflict. And I'll take you to another kind of passion, and I started to talk about it, is magazines, which I'm doing a lot of magazines cover. That was uh, Africa Rise. I work with The Economist, and I produce a lot of work for The Economist, which is a pleasure to work with them. I'm not explaining, so I hope it's OK. This one don't need explanation, or it needs the sex issue. That was, it took us a while to convince the guys in Time Out to do it, and, and, and it was the first time that Time Out moved their logo from the left to the center as well, that it will balance. The creative director convinced the top guys that kids wouldn't understand it, that it just looked like a beautiful waves of the Thames, <laughs> and they bought it. But at the end, it didn't go to print. It was just an online, uh, online cover. It was drugs in London made from pill and ecstasy pills on the policeman's uh, shoulders. Covers for the guide, the Guardian, New York Times, book reading. Really fun doing editorials and, and kind of reacting and illustrating stories. That was 30 years for Playmobil. That's a, Dutch magazine, Volkskrant, one of my favorite magazines. And that was the Dutch Design Week. Again, Israel and Palestine, which you can see the ship and you can see the, the wolf on, on the top, so he's looking that way. It was for a peace conference with Obama. That was just before COVID, who was looking at us. And now we know that everyone <laughs> looking after us. And BLM, if you remember the statues that have been pushed down. That's another thing that happened in COVID times. A lot of um, 
a lot of scripts actually were, a lot of films were adaptations of books and to save money and to save time. So it's, it's a story about kind of adopting books to a film or horror that was for Los Angeles Times. This is a different approach and it's for wallpaper magazine and it's all made with real object in real space that's been paint. So there's no Photoshop here. It's all big spaces that I build, eight different spaces, and we hanged elements of designers, and that was created. So each cover is dedicated to different country. And another passion is books. I love books, and I do a lot of book covers. And this is a range for Don Delilo, if you can see the, the twin towers inside. And it's a story of, of a guy that survived 9-11, and the story starts from 9-11, from the event. That's, that's the start of everything. This is how I work. I wake up at 9 o'clock, I don't touch my computer, I leave my mobile, and I go to Highgate Wood, which is opposite my studio. I sit with sketchbook, and I sketch. And I don't browse, and I don't do computer research. So until 4 o'clock, I'm just sketching, sketching, sketching. And it doesn't matter if it's a rainy day or a snowy day, I'm in the wood. And I'm back around 4 or 5 o'clock to the studio and I start to execute things that you see here. So I start to execute them digitally. That's the range of Don Delilo. I work closely with Murakami, so I um, was doing and still doing all Murakami's book. My Favorite writer is amazing. And yeah, this is the start of Wind Up Bird Chronicle, if you know the book. So really, this is how it starts. Margaret Atwood, Handmaid's Tale, which you can see the male on the right side of the cape lady. That was the latest one, the Testament. That was in National Theatre, George Orwell, 1984. Well, does someone else control my computer now? No, okay, that. Um, no. <laughs> and a few years ago, I was approached by Sholan. She's a Chinese entrepreneur that lives in London. And she wanted to teach her kids Mandarin, and she found it impossible. And she asked me if I can help her. And she sent me this icon and asked me to, to do a drawing of fire next to it. And I didn't like the idea of kind of doing Mandarin characters with little pictogram that will explain the meaning, because if you know in Mandarin, it's not alphabetical. It's one icon, one symbol that create the whole world. And I did this thing and sent it to her. So that was my interpretation to fire. And this is how Chinese evolve, which is a range of books that actually we did four or five books already of Chinese, where she sent me different characters, and I'm almost dancing behind the, the thing. It's just the, the same thing that I did with Saddam Hussein. It's almost the, the character is there, the letter is there, and I'm translating it with my drawing. And it's a very open system. For example, you can see Father, which wasn't approved by The Simpsons, uh, by Matt Groening, but that was my first one. And when that was rejected, it's the same character. So I, I made this one, which is a father with twins. And it's, it's exciting to see graphics that suddenly you see kids, for example, kids in, in London, in I think all over different places around the world are studying with Chinese. So it's become a proper learning system with cards and memory cards and games, and now it's animated. That was a challenge that the publisher gave me. If you know Peter and the Wolf, it's like, it's a Russian tale, a bit like Red Riding Hood, but how can I tell the story in Chinese way, which Everything actually is made with, with Mandarin characters. So this is a boy and buttons. So you can kind of learn everything from the details in the frame of the, of the story. It's a duck, ga, ga, ga. And the cat came. 
and the wolf swallow the duck. And the hunter, hunter is impossible letter. You can see how com complex it is. And then they, they, they catch the wolf. The real story that they cut, they beheaded the wolf, they cut his head, <laughs> but we put him in jail. So this is how the, how the story ends. And another fun project, I was asked by a Japanese organization to create a vantage point in Komoro. It's like a viewpoint, a very small structure that sits in the wood in Komoro. It's like three hours from Tokyo. And I went to the wood and I stayed there for a couple of, uh, I have a, this is my Japanese uh, agent on the left. So we stayed in the wood. And I found this surprise on, on the floor, as I told you, I'm, I have guides all around me of elements and things that I found. And these two leaves that was so poetic in a way of thinking of leaves that were dyed and falling down, but they look like a bird that fly up. So I love this kind of falling and flying and death and life. And I thought that this would be kind of great um, to create it. And, and actually, this is the structure. It's very simple. It's a leaf and it was built by 20 Japanese carpenters. And when you go inside the woods, so you go to here and you see a leaf, and when you leave the leaf, you go up, and when you leave it, you discover the bird, so you never see the bird first. You kind of live inside the leaf, and then you go out, you see a bird. And that was the screen print of it. And this one is, is different projects, and it reminds me a little bit of Cut the Conflict. It's the same principle. And I was asked by Moselle Lehomme. They had the, it in Paris. They had exhibition about racism. And the solution was a little like a photo booth. So you come with your friend, you take photo. The camera is picking your skin tone. And when you finish it, when you go out from the exhibition, you get my poster with your skin tone printed. So it was a celebration of skin tones in a way. And each one is different because each skin tone is different. So they had different colors. And a jump to COVID. That's another talk that I'm preparing now on COVID because I worked a lot during COVID time. I didn't have time to do other things and I continue to work. And I found that what I normally do and, and my illustration suddenly become, get kind of different perspective and maybe they can sa save people's life. That was on the point when you know, society realized that the problem is with youth, that they're going out and they're infecting the old people. And, and this campaign is actually convinced teenagers to stay at home, do your mobile, read, just be lazy. So be hero, be boring, stay at home and don't do anything but don't, in, don't infect other people. So it's a range of superhero with lazy, lazy people inside, lazy teenagers. So each poster is kind of telling a different story. And that was in New York. And another stage of that was kind of the new normal and missing, and missing what we had before. But if you're going to wear masks, there might be a chance that you will come back to it. So that's kind of the, the message, wear masks. And you can see kind of moments of that we're missing, like meeting friends and drink coffee or going to cruise having haircut, going to birthdays, rock concert, back to the office. This one is the one that people complain that they don't want to go back to the office. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see two kids and a mother, and three kids, sorry, one is in our hair and two in, in the computer. And three years ago, Thames and Hudson, it's a British publisher. They publish book, uh, five books, a collection of five books with my work. And I'm not going to take you through all of them, but each one was dedicated to different subjects from portrait to sexual images, advertising. But I'll take you, that was the 
launch of the book. And this is kind of a hidden mini book inside a portrait book, which not a lot of people have seen. And it's my drawing when I was eight years old. That was 41 years ago. And, and it's a sketchbook that I drew all my neighbors. And it's kind of real. When I see it, I realize what I'm doing today. And I'm doing the same thing that I've done 40 years ago. So um, the guy on the right is Hamdouni, and he's my father's friend. He used to be a smoker, and I thought maybe I'll use his teeth to create a lighter. So it's all kind of stories in faces. That's my scout instructor on the left, and my friend, which was pianist, and his teeth are keyboards. And we had a businessman neighbor, which I drew like a, like a graph on his teeth. And another one, which probably you're not going to see a lot, which is one of the selection, it's called Rough Smooth. And it's my sketchbooks and my process. So I'm taking sketchbooks with me, and that's for different purpose. So I all the time have sketchbook, and I peel things from wall. And so all the things, the works that you see here are done while I'm wa walking or sitting in a cafe or on the queue to the bank. So they're very spontaneous and very intuitive and completely opposite to what I'm doing or what I'm executing on my graphic thing, which they're kind of all over and, and, and very emotional. And, and yeah, each situation kind of take me to different place. This was when my father was in hospital and I couldn't communicate with him and I started to pull papers and tissue papers that were around him and he had to see from the window of the hospital, so suddenly fish came into it. So um, the sketchbooks are taking me to completely different journeys. Thank you.